when you look at your periodic table, so you need to know for group 1, they will always have a ion of plus 1. Group 2 will be plus 2. Group 3 will be plus 3. And then group 5 will be minus 3. Group 6 will be negative 2. And then group 7 will be negative 1. And in group 0, that's 0. Okay, so this will be important when you're trying to figure out the chemical formula of the ions later. Okay, we need to know why do elements undergo bonding? Okay, so because most of the atoms are, okay, they have incomplete outermost shell. So thus, they will either what? Transfer or share electrons to achieve a stable electronic configuration. Okay, transfer usually happens between metal and non-metal. And between non-metal and non-metal, usually they will share electrons. Okay, stable electronic configuration basically means their outermost shell will have eight valence electron. Okay, I have a full outermost shell. So now we will go into the details. Okay, next. So how do you derive the chemical formula of compound? So the trick is that you need to write down the charge of each ion, and then you will cross the number of the charge downwards. Okay, ignoring the sign. So I'll give go through some example. So the first one, let's say going through uh, sodium and chlorine. So sodium is group one. So it's Na plus. Okay, so the previous slide is there's a plus one. So it's just plus. The one usually we don't write, okay? Chlorine is group seven. So if you remember, it will be Cl minus. So you will put them together, NaCl, and then you will cross down the charge. Okay, uh, I mean the number in front of the charge, the plus minus. Okay, so here's one. So you bring down one. So we don't write here, okay? Usually when it's one, we don't write, okay? Then when it's coming down here, so it's one also. So it's NaCl. Next one. Magnesium. Magnesium is group 2 metal. And then bromine is group 7. So group 2 will be Mg2+. Bromine is Br-. minus. So when you put them together, it will be MgBr. But you need to cross, okay? Cross down the number of the charge downwards, okay? Just the number. So this one you will cross down. It's just 1, which we don't usually write. Then this one you cross down 2. So your answer will be MgBr2. Okay? One more example. Aluminium and oxygen. Aluminium, if you check your periodic table, will be group 3, so it's Al3+. Oxygen is group 6, so it's O2-. minus. So when you group them together, it will be AlO, okay? But when you cross the number, okay, you cross the 2 down, it will be here. Cross the 3 down, it will be 3. So the formula for aluminum oxide will be Al2O3, okay? So with this technique, you can be able to derive any chemical formula of compound, okay? Next one. What about dot and cross diagram for ionic compound? So first of all, you need to know ionic compound consists of what? Metal cations and non-metal anions. Okay, so usually the metal atom will transfer its valent electron to the non-metal atom to form an ionic bond. Okay, so the keyword here is transfer. Okay, they don't share. For covalent bonding, they will share their valence electron. That is for uh, the, the next chapter. Okay, so take note, transfer. So let's look at example, sodium. So if you look at our periodic table, sodium is uh, 2, 8, 1. The first shell has 2 electrons, second shell has 8 electrons, and the last shell has 1 electron. So that's why it's group 1, okay? 2, 8, 1. And what about chlorine? Chlorine, if you check your periodic table, is 2, 8, 7. Okay, total is 17. So first shell is 2, second shell is 8, third shell is 7. So when they read each other, right? Okay, so first of all, you need to figure out. Sodium is what? Group 1, so it's Na+. Plus. Chlorine is Cl minus. When you cross them, you get NaCl. Okay? So next, when they share, right? Uh, I mean, they transfer. They will transfer the valence electron from sodium to chlorine. So it will transfer is one of the valence electron to here. Okay? So in the end, they'll get this one. So you get left with 2, 8. Okay? 2, 8. Then with a square bracket plus. Because now if you compare to its original atom, it has one less electron. So now it will be positively charged. But what about chlorine? Okay, chlorine, can you see? It has one more electron, you know, by a dot, black dot, that to show that it's coming from what? From sodium atom. So now initially it's 287, now it becomes 288. So if you compare to its original state, atom state, uh, you have one more electron from sodium. So now the square bracket will be minus because it has one more extra electron. For sodium, you have one missing electron, so it's positively charged. Okay, the reason why they want to transfer their electrons, right, is because they want to achieve a stable electronic configuration. In simpler terms, Ms. Ma, the last number here, right, must be 8. Okay, so this 281, you want to give away 1 to become 28. This 287, you want to take in one more to become 288. 
Okay. Next one. Okay. Sometimes the question they will ask you, uh, why this compound has a high melting point or low boiling point or whatever. Okay. So you answer it using this four point template. So the first point you talk about the structure. Second point you talk about the bonding. Third point you talk about the particles. And then the fourth point you talk about the energy level required. Okay. I'll show you how to use it. But for now, you uh, make sure you memorize this one. So this will ensure that your answer um in the exam uh, will be complete. Okay. So I only compound. Okay, so ionic compound has what high melting and boiling point. What's the reason? First, you're gonna say what it has a what giant ionic lattice, okay, or giant ionic structure. So it depends uh which one your teacher prefer. Okay, usually we just say I giant ionic structure. Next one, okay. What a bonding, strong electrostatic force of attraction. Okay, that's the bonding. Third point, between what particles? Between oppositely charged particles. Okay, oppositely charged ions. That's why it's called ionic compound because there are ions inside. Third one, okay, because it's strong, strong forces. So you need a lot of energy is needed to overcome these strong forces. And since a lot of energy is required, thus it has a high melting and boiling point. Okay, so this is your standard four point template. This is the first point, the structure. Second point, the bonding. Third point, the particle. Fourth point, the energy level. Okay, then you conclude. Okay, so just memorize this one, four point template. So if you look at a diagram here below, Okay, this is the giant ionic lattice. So it's like a three-dimensional structure. It's like a crystal structure. And your positive and negative ions will be in alternate manner, connected in an alternate manner. Plus, minus, plus, minus, plus, minus. Okay? Or something like this. Two-dimensional. Next one. Okay, what about the solubility and the conductivity of ionic compounds? Okay, so ionic compounds are, are soluble in water, but insoluble in organic solvent. Okay, inorganic solvent basically means uh, oil or alcohol. Okay, so this one you take note. What about the conductivity? They can conduct in what? Aqueous or molten state. Okay, so uh, only these two states. In solid, it cannot conduct. Okay, this is very important because usually the question will ask, uh, ionic compound can conduct electricity under what states and in what states it cannot conduct. And then what's the reason why? Okay, so aqueous and molten, you can conduct. What's the reason? In molten or aqueous states, they are mobile ions. Still remember they have what? Uh, positive cation and negative anions. Okay, these ions are mobile. Okay, they can uh, move freely. That's why they can help to conduct electricity in molten or equal state. But in solid state, what happen? Okay, the ions can only what? Vibrate about fixed position because in a solid state. Okay, can only vibrate about fixed position. Thus, they are unable to move around to conduct electricity. So the ions are always there. It's just a matter of whether they are free to move or they are not free to move. Okay, so take note the reason. In moton equals can conduct, but solid cannot conduct electricity. Okay, next one. So just remember uh, whatever is highlighted. Okay, very useful. These are the keywords that your teacher will be looking for. Next one. So this is a summary. Okay, uh, later on we will do the covalent compound and metals, but for now we will just focus on ionic compound. So the four point template again. Structure, giant ionic lattice, bonding, strong electrostatic forces of attraction. What's the particle? Oppositely charged ions. What's the energy level? High energy level. So this leads to high melting and boiling point. What about solubility? Soluble in water, but insoluble in organic solvents. And then the conductivity can only conduct in moton or aqueous. Solid cannot conduct. Okay, so this is a summary. Next, the cross diagram for the compound form between sodium and sulfur. After that, you need to explain why the compound form between sodium and sulfur cannot conduct electricity in a solid state, but able to conduct when it's molten or equal state. So let's look at a part one first, dot and cross. So for sodium, it's 281. And then for sulfur, it's 286. So when you want to figure out the final compound, right? So you need to figure out the formula first. So Sodium is Na plus group 1, sulfur is group 6, so it's S2 minus. So you get NaS, and then when you cross the numbers, you get Na2S. So you know that you will need what? 1 sulfur and 2 sodium. Alright, so let's look at this one. Sodium will lose 1 electron, so it becomes 2 8. Okay, with the square bracket plus. Then sulfur, okay, you will take in 2 electron, 1 here. And one here. So the overall charge will be two minus. So it becomes two eight. So it becomes uh stable. So it's sodium ion two eight. Okay. 
And then because, don't forget, because it's Na2S, so you have two sodium ions, so you'll put two in front. Okay, or either you just draw this two times, and then just one one time, or you can just put two in front here. Okay, so this is your final answer. This will be your side working. Okay, this one is just also your side working. So this is the final answer. So remember for, um, I only compound the dot and cross diagram, make sure you have your square bracket with the charge. Okay, if it's required by your teacher. Okay, dot means what? Electron from your sodium, and then cross is the electron from sulfur. Okay, next one, explain why this compound can conduct in, uh, cannot conduct in solid state, but can conduct in moton or equal state. So first point, you're going to say what? Sodium and sulfur together form an ionic compound. And then in solid states, the ions can only vibrate about fixed position. Thus, they are unable to move around to conduct electricity. But in moton or equal states, the ions are free to move and can help to conduct electricity. Okay, so just memorize these are the keywords. Draw the dot and cross diagram to show the bonding between magnesium and chlorine. And then, next one, a student proposed that the melting point will be higher for magnesium chloride compared to carbon tetrachloride. Okay, so do you agree with the statement and then give a reason? So let's look the, at 2A first. Okay, so magnesium, 2A2, if you check your periodic table, group 2. And then for chlorine, group 7, 287. So group 2, the charge will be Mg2+. Plus. Chlorine will be Cl-. minus. So when you cross, you get MgCl. Then you get your, cross down the numbers. So you'll get MgCl2. Okay, so it means later when you draw, uh, you have one magnesium ion and two chloride ion. Okay, so for magnesium, it will give away two electrons. So it's become 2, 8. So you're left with 2, 8 here. Okay, the outer shell is gone. So it becomes 2 plus. For chlorine, it will take in one electron. So it's a different symbol. Huh? Okay, square bracket, and with a charge is negative. So from 287, become 288. Okay, and don't forget, there's a 2 here. So you need two, 2 of this chloride ion. So you just put 2 here. And then of course, your legend. Okay, electron from magnesium is the black dot. And then with the cross, is electron from chlorine. Okay, part B. So now you compare the melting point between this and this. So if you see carefully, this is a ionic compound. And then carbon tetrachloride is actually a covalent compound. So you have to use the four-point template for both compounds. So the first one, do you agree? Yes. Okay. So first point, magnesium chloride has a giant ionic structure, strong electrostatic force of attraction between what? The two ions, magnesium Mg2 plus ion and O2 minus ions. A lot of energy is needed to overcome these strong forces, so that's why it has a high melting point. What about carbon tetrachloride? Okay, this one. Carbon tetrachloride has a simple molecular structure. What's the bonding? Weak intermolecular force of attraction exists between CCl4 molecule. Okay, it's between the molecule now. Huh? Okay, this one is an ion, but this is molecule. Then this one, since it's weak forces, so you need little amount of energy is needed to overcome these weak forces. So Therefore, it has a lower melting point. Okay, so that's all. I will go through more about covalent compound in the next slides. Okay, the four point template. Okay, so don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Okay, bye.